Good morning, friends. This is Jana Benun from Israeli News Live and uh, Benun Institute of Biblical Research. The reason for me being here today is to explain to you our stand on Catholicism. I have researched um, Catholicism quite in depth and I have talked about Catholicism in conferences, in pre-COVID times when we were free to gather and have conferences, and then we posted them on sites and they were removed by the uh, censorship. So uh, my work got removed from internet and I know I need to reload this, but um, the reason for this video is because Steve had uh, Eric Gajewski on from Tradcat Night. And a lot of you have written to me uh, and wanted to know our stand on Catholicism because he spoke of Mary and, and Fatima and Catholic prophecies. Now, first of all, the reason we had, uh, we allowed Eric Gajewski on our show is because we have a lot of things in common in exposing uh, today's issues that I cannot talk about right now here since this is going to be on Israeli News Live YouTube. So if you look at his website there, you will understand that a lot of things we talk about uh, are very similar to Eric's things that he's exposing. And we kind of hoped he would be talking about this type of things and not about Catholic faith. But as you know, when people believe certain things, they talk about them. So this is what happened. And um, just kind of a refresher course for you, what we think of Catholicism, where we stand on Catholicism as a ministry. So I brought up here my old um, PowerPoint from 2018 that I presented in Orlando, Florida, uh, in a conference. The base for my whole lecture was a book by Edward Hendry, okay? And it was, uh, for, uh, the foreword was written by Tex Mars, he's deceased now, he's a brother in Christ, he died recently. Uh, and the name of the book is Solving the Mystery of Babylon the Great, because the question is, what is Babylon the Great? Is it a Catholic Church or is it Judaism? Well, this book gives a lot of light on the issue, and I would say you could perhaps order the book. It's a big book. It's a lot of study, a lot of work. I have highlighted almost everything, and on top of my study, I went to actual sources that were cited, and I bought all the books on sources that the author cited, and I made sure that things he's speaking about are indeed true. What you're going to see here is very little tiny excerpt of, of the conference uh, that I presented. I will be presenting it here, just reading my PowerPoint, basically. So it will be some part of Catholic um, Vatican history, certainly not the entire history, but one part of it that uh, we're going to expose here. Now, as far as Mr. Edward Hendry, some of you have some conflicting views with him as well, and I do too, myself. The reason I am using this book is because um, I really believe this is a scholarly book. It deserves our attention. The research was done really well, and, um, and basically I agree with the author on this particular issue. Okay, so let's just talk about a little bit about history of Vatican. What happened in Rome? Okay, well, let me just go through this that way. Hold on just a second. Um, we're going to start right here. Okay, what happened? Julian, Emperor of Rome. It happened around the year of 300, okay, when the Catholic Church was entered by, um, well, basically polluted by Emperor of Rome, or Roman Empire got a pagan emperor, and that has transformed the Catholic faith to even bigger apostasy. Well, what happened? Uh, the, it renewed pagan beliefs and declared paganism an official state religion of the empire. 
So supposedly Rome declined through Christianity. So uh, uh, Julian, Emperor Julian, wanted to return Rome to its former glory. So we know what the Constantine did, right? And I'm not going to the whole history, and I'm not saying Constantine was um, a good emperor or anything. I'm just trying to bring you into some doctrines of Catholicism and how did they creep into what we know today as Catholic faith, right? So basically, again, Emperor Julian was a pagan emperor who declared uh, paganism official religion of the empire. Now, the, he aimed to completely destroy Christianity and return Rome to its former glory. But what he did, surprisingly, he gave to Jews their old positions, which they lost under Emperor Constantine and his sons. Even the rebuilding of the Solomon's Temple was to be arranged. So we always learn from history and what is really interesting that when the pagan emperor comes to Rome, the Jews were thriving, they were getting all of their positions back, and now they were talking about rebuilding the Solomon's Temple. Interesting. So during the reign of Roman Emperor Julian, important changes happened to Rome, in Rome. Number one, Jews, religious Talmudists, gained influence and there was a revival of Jewish scholarship in Rome. I hope it reminds you of something that happens, that's happening today in the United States, kind of like a modern Rome, right? We have definitely have a revival of Jewish scholarship here. Number two, persecution of Christians started. And I hope you can see how it's happening even now that true Christians are being persecuted and labeled as, you know, terrorists. Number three, revival of Hebrew studies in famous yeshiva called Metivta de Mata Romi. Rabbi Kalonimus Moses, Rabbi Jacob Gaon, Rabbi Nathan Yehiel wrote great Talmudic dictionary called the Aruk. Number four, Roman Jewish traditions follow those practiced in the land of Israel and liturgical customs started in Rome and spread to the rest of the world. So let us stop here. We again see the similarities back on the Emperor Julian and what's happening today in the United States. There was a revival of Hebrew studies. The, the very famous yeshiva was built and the first Talmudic dictionary called the Aruk was born. But number four is extremely important. Let me read it again. Roman Jewish traditions followed those practiced in land of Israel and liturgical customs started in Rome. This is extremely important to know this, this particular sentence. Now let's go into Catholic encyclopedia, encyclopedia liter and the liturgy, uh, year of 2010. It says in Christian use, liturgy meant the public official service of the church that corresponded to the official service of the temple in the old law. So again, Catholics are saying that official liturgy of Catholic Church and serve public official service of the church corresponded to official service in a temple under the old law system, okay? Catholic Encyclopedia, New York. The Eucharist, quote, the Eucharist was always celebrated at the end of a service of lessons, psalms, prayers, and preaching, which was itself merely a continuation of the service of the synagogue. So we have everywhere this double function. First, a synagogue service Christianized, in which the holy books were read, psalms were sung, and prayers said by the bishop in the name of all, all the people answering Amen in Hebrew, as had their Jewish forefathers and homilies, explanations of what had been read, were made by the bishops or priests, just as they have been made in a synagogues by the learned men and elders. Uh, these are, this is Catholic Encyclopedia actually describing to you how they Christianized 
Christian services or Catholic services, and they were modeled exactly after the synagogues, okay? All right, in the book of Edward Henry, Solving the Mysteries of Babylon the Great, uh, chapter 5, pages 42, 45, he's talking about priesthood, Levitical priesthood mediators between God and man. He's basically talking about similarities of Catholic faith with the Judaic faith. So you can see how Catholic faith, as we have it today, is modeled after Judaism to the T. All right, so on one side, he's describing how priesthood of the Catholic ch uh, Church corresponds to Levitical priesthood or mediators between God and men, right? Because Pope is what? The f they call him Father and God on earth, basically, who mediates between the flock and, and God, supposedly. Number two, the po Pope corresponds to the Jewish high priest, College of Cardinals, which were 70, corresponds uh, with 70 elders of Moses. Confession of sins to priest for forgiveness comes from Leviticus 5.5. 5. And daily sacrifice of the mass corresponds to daily burnt offering. Okay, so notice the similarities and at the end you will understand why we cannot agree with Catholic faith, because once you examine its practices, its beliefs and doctrines, you will understand that they exactly can't correspond with the Antichrist religion of Judaism. And basically, Catholic Church is like a Gentile face of Judaism. It's like a chameleon that just changed or the, the, the second side of the coat, I would say, that, that just kind of changed uh, for the... It's, I call Catholicism a Judaism for, for Gentiles, okay? Okay, let's keep going. Now, Edward continues in, in those uh, similarities. Altars for sacrifices corresponds to altars in the Old Testament. Altar vessels of gold and silver, same as in Old Testament. Vestments for priests. Okay, that's, that's described in the Old Testament. Cardinal's school cap is Jewish yamulka. Notice what Jews wear here, yamulkas or school caps. And notice that bishops and pope also wear the same thing, right? They wear yamulkas. Now, number 10 was offertory, which is basically, basically offerings. So here we go. Do you see how many similarities we have? Let's keep moving. Liturgy was the service of the temple. So Sunday obligations corresponds to Sabbath observance. So yes, the, the, the Jews had Saturday. The, the Catholic Church declared a Sunday, right? But it's, it's corresponding to each other. Ecclesiastical feasts corresponds to Jewish feasts. Scapular or hair shirt to sackcloth. And works-based salvation comes from uh, Mosaic law and even Talmudic law because uh, in Talmud there is even more laws and works defined for Jewish people. All right, number 16, sacrament of infant baptism comes from rite of circumcision. Sacrament of confirmation comes from Jewish bar mitzvah. Now, uh, you know that when when uh, boys do confirmation in Catholic churches, usually when they're 13, and this is when, and girls are 12, I think, and that corresponds to Jewish bar mitzvah, and they too have a sort of like a Jewish confirmation of boys to Jewish faith at the age of 13. Now, burning of candles and incense, that's the same as from Old Testament. No salvation outside Catholic church, okay, corresponds with Gentiles must convert to Judaism to be saved or uh, follow Noahide laws to be saved, right? Be Noahide laws is basically Judaism for Gentiles. Um, holy water font <clears throat> come from the lever in Exodus 40. So a lot of these uh, similarities, you can see that Catholic faith is basically Judaism redressed in another form, presented in an another form. Uh, but all you have is just basically Judaism. Uh, traditions of men comes from Talmud, 613 mitzvot. So 
these are Talmudic tra- traditions compared to Catholic uh, Church. Vain repetitions, same Jewish prayers recited daily at certain times. This is extremely important. As you know, Catholic uh, people have rosaries. And, and they kind of pray every day the same prayer over, 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 these vain repetitions constantly over, 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 where maybe you don't know that Jewish people do the same. They might not use actual beds and rosary, but they repeat the same prayer. They memorize them and they repeat them without thinking. It's kind of like automat- automaton, right? It's just automatically recited constantly the same thing every day over and over and over. So this is Judaic influence in Catholic Church. And by the way, it creeped into Islam as well. And you might not be uh, familiar with the fact that Islamists use uh, those rosaries as Catholic Church does. They pray the rosary as well. Now, veneration of saints uh, comes from idolatry, pagan gods, even worship of rabbis, right? Like worship of Schneerson. So you know how Catholics venerate their saints and bow down in front of their saints? The the same thing is happening in uh, Judaism, okay? They uh, venerate, literally venerate their rabbis and the rabbis that have divine status like Schneerson, Menachem Mendel Schneerson has, for example, uh, they call them Rebbe, okay? R-E-B-B-E. Now, worship of Mary as mother of God comes from queen of heaven. And I think Steve touched on this and told you that we are to honor honor Mary. Definitely, you don't want to to speak ill of her. She is a woman of God and mother of Jesus Christ. She was a wonderful woman, and I'm sure that Jesus would like us to honor her, uh, honor her and remember her. But we, we do not pray to Mary nor use her as our mediator, right? And this is what Catholics do. Now, they will say that they don't worship Mary, but prayer to Mary uh, and bow down in front of a statue and pray to Mary is a idol worship. And nowhere did we have a commandment by Jesus to pray to his mother, okay? So uh, it co- corresponds in Judaism to Queen of Heaven, that they had a queen of heaven by name Ashtora, and they have prayed to her and they committed idolatry. Statutes and images that Catholic uh, Church uses are in, uh, corresponds to images on the wall of Solomon's temple, Ezekiel 8, 10. So now uh, what Edward Henry was doing here is trying to uh, make you understand how similar the two faiths are. Okay, so Catholicism, Gentile face of Judaism, Mary, the queen of heaven, the queen of heaven during the time of Jeremiah, worshipped by the Jews. She was just renamed Mary in Catholic Church. Hat cross bands of Good Friday come from Jeremiah 7, 18. Women net their dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven. So Catholics took that particular idolatrous deed and redressed it for hot cross buns on their Good Friday. Okay, more points on comparison. The motion of Jesus to call Redeemer. Jews' denial of Jesus as a Messiah. Okay, so Jews definitely deny Jesus as Messiah. They don't even consider him a prophet like Islam does. Okay, so it's a denigration of Jesus. But in... Um, in the Catholic faith, faith, Jesus Christ is only a co-redeemer because they pray through two saints and they pray to Mary as well. Now, preoccupation of Christ's death rather than resurrection, a crucifix with a dead Jesus on it, and Jews' denial of Jesus' resurrection. Now, number three was purgatory teaching originated in Judaism and then self-flogging as well. Now, on that, I had more uh, information at the time uh, of, um, oh, I actually have it right here. So, yes, a lot of people do not understand that purgatory teaching is not a Catholic teaching. It originated in Judaism, believe it or not. That was a surprise to me two years ago as well. And then the self-flagging of priests, there was a 
practice in especially in older times like 100 years ago 80 years ago even when priests used to flog themselves and the same thing uh came from judaism uh, and that's something people are not aware of as well now uh, this is another source by joe heshmeyer jewish prayers for the dead it says in this particular uh, article, the article quotes on one third century AD writing, which states that by such prayers, a dead person is released from Gehenna. From this, Heshmer infers that many Jews believed in purgatory, and therefore purgatory is a pre-Christian belief that is part of legitimate Judaism during Jesus's day. Prayers for the dead as Jewish practiced, entered Catholic doctrine through Jews. The Jewish practice of praying for the dead is closely tied to the idea that it liberates the souls of the dead. Tradition is recorded in Midrash, Tana Devei Eliyahu. So isn't that a surprise? Because so many people think it's Catholics are um, guilty of this and they're not aware that it is actual Jewish practice and it entered uh, Catholicism through the Talmudic rabbis that entered Catholic faith, faith under Julian, Emperor Julian, uh, when Jews uh, had liberty to influence um, pagan religion of Rome. Now, now let's look at this particular thing on purgatory from Jewish Encyclopedia in 1906. And the encyclopedia says, and in, on, on the purgatory, it says an intermediate state through which souls are to pass in order to be purified from sin before they are admitted into the heavenly paradise. The view of purgatory is still more clearly expressed in rabbinical passages as in the teaching of the Shema, Shemaites. In the last judgment day, there shall be three classes of souls. The righteous shall at once be written down for the life everlasting, the wicked for Gehenna, but those whose virtues and sins counterbalance one another shall go down to Gehenna and float up and down until they rise purified. For of them it is said, I will bring thee third part into the fire, and refine them as silver is refined, and try them as gold is tried. So here we go. Jews are using Zechariah chapter 13, verse 9, uh, to, to, to kind of turn Zechariah's scripture into belief in purgatory. So many people think that purgatory is a false Catholic uh, belief, and a lot of Catholics are not even aware that this particular belief creeped into their faith from Judaic Talmudism, okay? So here we go, Jewish Encyclopedia, their own mouth is telling you that. Jewish Kabbalah entered the Roman Church. Jewish studies led to incorporation of Jewish doctrines into the Roman Church. Jewish Kabbalah was introduced into the Roman Catholic Church by Pope Sixtus. 1471, 1484, I mean, during this time, uh, Pope Sixtus, this little time, that's not his uh, birth, birthday and his death day, but it's the time when he was influencing, influencing uh, Catholic Church. He ordered Kabbalistic writings to be translated into Latin for the use of divinity students. So, Jewish Kabbalah enters, enters Catholic Church. Kabbalah writings are translated into Latin and all the priests in theological seminaries have to study it. Now, let that sink in if you are a Catholic, okay? Now we have Edith Starr Miller the author, she wrote a book called Occult Theocracy, and on page 76 she says, Esoteric teachings for the higher initiates are to be found in the Kabbalah. Therein are contained the mysterious rites for evocations, 
the indications and keys to practices for conjuration of supernatural forces, the science of numbers, which is called gematria, astrology, etc. The practical implications of the Kabbalist knowledge is manifested in a use made of it through the ages by Jews to gain influence both in the higher spheres of Gentile life and over the masses. Well, let, let's just read this again for yourself, please. She is a historian. Uh, she says on page 77 of the same book, Occult Theocracy. The Chaldean science, acquired by many of the Jewish priests during the captivity of Babylon, gave birth to the sect of the Pharisees, whose name only appears in the Holy Scriptures and in the writings of the Jewish historians after the captivity, 606 BC. The works of the celebrated scientist Monk leave no doubt on the point that the sect appeared during the period of captivity. So we know that Pharisees were born or, or the, the cult of Pharisees started during Babylonian captivity. And these were people who took the pagan religion in Babylon and made it uh, as their own and call, they called it Judaism. So this is what Judaism today is. It's basically Babylonian paganism. Okay. Uh, she continues in the book Occult Theocracy on page 77. From then dates the Kabbalah or tradition of the Pharisees. For a long time, their precepts were only transmitted orally, but later they formed the Talmud and received their final form in a book called Sefer HaZohar. The Pharisees were, as it were, a class whose tendency was to form a kind of intellectual aristocracy among the Jews. And we know that today, um, in state of Israel and all over the world, basically the Orthodox rabbis call themselves Pharisees proudly. So they are the continuation of the same group that formed in Babylon and took this pagan religion of, of Babylon. And uh, they have first uh, created oral traditions out of it, and then later they compiled it and um, encoded it in a book of Talmud and a book of uh, Sefer Zohar. So they have a Talmud Zohar and a Kabbalah. But now you know where this group started. And later on, when Jesus was in a land of Israel, we know why he condemned them, right? And the same groups are as Orthodox Jews today. They continue the same tradition as, this were, as their predecessors from the uh, Babylon, Babylon, and they uh, even call their Talmud Babylonian Talmud. Okay. Now, occult theocracy, page 78, 79 continues. This group of intellectual pantheists was soon to acquire a directing influence over the Jewish nation. However, saturated with pantheistic Chaldeism, they might have been, the Pharisees preserved their ethnic pride intact. This religion of man divinized, which they had absorbed at Babylon, they conceived solely as applying to the prophet of a Jew, the superior and predestined being. Again, she is beautifully explaining here that this group of intellectuals, uh, they call themselves rabbis, the scholars, they acquired a direct influence over the Jewish people as a nation. So basically, you need to pray for every Jewish person because they are under, under control and influence of their rabbis who prescribe to them all the traditions and their own religion, and they are victims of this. This is why we need to call them out of that system. And because Catholic Church is Judaism redressed for Gentiles, Catholicism is part of the Babylon, the great, part of this, um, um, well, basically, um, Babylon the great, yes. Okay, occult theocracy continues on page 78. I had it in red, so it must be important. It says, the promise of universal dominion, which the Orthodox Jew found in the law. The Pharisees did not interpret in a sense of the reign of the God of Moses over the nations, 
but in that of a material domination to be imposed on the universe by the Jews. That's so important. No wonder I put this in red in 2018. Let's read this again. The promise of universal dominion, which the Orthodox Jew found in the law, the Pharisees did not interpret in a sense of the reign of God of Moses over the nations but in that of a material domination to be imposed on the universe by the Jews. The awaited Messiah was no longer the redeemer of original sin, a spiritual victor who would lead the world. It was a temporal king, bloody with battle, who would make Israel master of the world and drag all people under the wheels of his chariot. I highly recommend you read her book. This is an excellent, excellent research, and I, re I own those books, and it's really fascinating the way that she, she's able to describe it. So what did we read here? They reinterpreted the law of Moses. They added to it, right? And instead of preaching that it will be God himself who will reign over the world, they reinterpreted it that it's going to be them, you know, right? The, well, the Jews, that will they will have material dom domination over the world. She also explained how they changed the identity of the Messiah. Messiah was no longer to be a redeemer of original sin and spiritual victor that would lead the world to salvation, but instead the Jewish Messiah has a totally different identity than Christian Messiah. He's a temporal king bloody with battle and that king will hand israel world domination over gentiles and this is what jews really believe now i did post here blavatsky theosophical glossary we know blavatsky was a satanist okay she says the hidden wisdom of the hebrew rabbis of the middle ages derived from the older secret doctrines concerning divine things and cosmology cosmogony, which were combined into a theology after the time of the captivity of the Jews in Babylon. All the works fall under the esoteric category are termed Kabbalistic. That's only proof and further proof that she's describing um, uh, how it was Jews in Babylon that adopted all of these Kabbalah esoteric teachings. Okay, and what is Kabbalah? I talked about this, but I'm not going to go through this right now. <clears throat> Let me see if there was actually anything more about Catholic Church. Um, if you want, I will present this on Bichut channel. And I would like to remind you, I would like to remind you, we are heavily censored, as many people are. So... You can find our free speech on following channels. I connect effects on the Israeli News Live, uh, brand new to Israeli News Live, Patreon. Now we are worried about Patreon, but we will still be putting teachings there. We have Danone Institute of Biblical Research. That's YouTube. It wasn't touched yet. We're only putting biblical teachings there. We also have an app. I have a BitChute channel. It's a little pain in the butt because I have to, when, when I download something there, it takes the entire day to download one thing. So it's not an easy channel to work with, but there is a free speech. Uh, so just remember that, that we can't speak very freely on, on YouTube channel anymore. So make an effort to, to look for us in these other places. Also, I would like to ask you if you would like be, to be on our email list where we always send out news, news alerts, write to me to Israeli News Live at protonmail.com. Again, Israeli News Live at protonmail.com and put in a subject, please put me on your news list and that way i will i will start sending you um every day 
a, every day very important news. Now, this video, I hope it explained uh, what we think of Catholic faith, that you are 100% sure that we do not agree with Catholic teachings. This, this video is not against Eric Gajewski by no means. I think he's a very intelligent young man. I do not agree with his faith, Catholic faith, but um, he does a very good job in exposing a lot of propaganda and agendas that I cannot talk about here. So I hope when he hears this video, he's not going to think I'm against him. I'm definitely not. I appreciate that he had my husband on, but uh, when he started speaking his freely, his Catholic faith on our channel, it misled a lot of people thinking we promote Catholicism. So I just wanted to kind of clear this up, and I hope that this will clear it up for you. Okay, well, thank you so much for your attention, and please have a great day. And today, please go into brand new to Patreon, Iconet FX, check out my beat shoot, Rise Up Children of God beat shoot, and sign up for a newsletter by emailing me at Israeli News Live at Proton Mail. Dot com and let me know that you want to receive my emails, our emails. I mean, that's me and Steve together. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you are having a wonderful day despite all this bad news. And now I'm going with Steve to do some news for you, which will be presented on these other channels. Thank you. Have a great day.